Strong wind warning. Aircraft unable to return to home automatically. Lower altitude immediately and return to home manually. Hi. I'm sure most of the DJI Mavic Mini pilot out there has seen this wind warning in the middle of somewhere during a flight under windy condition, which is concerning. I'm going to clarify this warning message and also to provide some basic idea on how to tackle windy situation. Please do consider like my video if you found it useful and subscribe to my channel as it really gives me the motivation to continue creating content that I hope is beneficial, especially for the new pilot. The lower altitude and manual part is fine and absolutely correct way of handling wind because the higher it goes, the stronger the wind. But for this sentence, aircraft unable to return to home automatically is the one that seems to be confusing. What is your understanding of this particular sentence? The auto return to home will not function and cannot be initiated in this condition. The auto return to home will still function and can still be initiated in this condition. When we talk about auto return to home or auto RTH, it is including either you press the RTH button on the remote control or the phone or when the connection between the remote control and the aircraft is lost or your remote control run out of battery and the aircraft treat it as a connection loss provided you have set the signal loss setting to return to home. All of the scenario will make the aircraft return to home point by itself using the aircraft GPS and compass. Because the word unable is used in the warning, which makes it sound like impossible to return to home automatically. Aside from self-experience and researching through the internet, I've decided to seek clarification directly from DJI themselves and the response I got is this. Please kindly note that when the strong wind warning prompts, it means that the RTH function can still be activated but chances are that the drone may be blow away by the wind or the remaining battery is not enough for the drone to return against the strong wind. So the number two understanding is correct. Rest assured, the auto return to home RTH will still function and can be initiated, but whether it can successfully return to home or not is another story which will be my next theoretically explanation. Kindly do take note. Again, I repeat that this video will mostly theoretically based, so some of the reference given might be incorrect versus the real data and I am not testing the limits of the Mavic Mini, so I do believe that theoretically understanding is sufficient for a safe flight. I do understand that there are a lot more factors like the real wind resistance, aerodynamic, airspeed or ground speed measurement, tilting angle, battery voltage, real power consumption, system health, aircraft or props condition, wind gas and so on, in which I will probably need a lab with all the tools to test that. Unfortunately, I don't have any of that so I think I will just stick to the layman terms for a safe flight that is simple to understand. What is headwind and tailwind? A headwind is where the aircraft is flying against or into the wind direction. A tailwind is where the aircraft is flying with the wind direction. Let's assume the wind speed is constantly at 6 meter per second at the altitude of 100 meter. The default auto return to home or RTH speed is about 8 meter per second, same as the P mod. Doesn't matter whether you are in a sport or cine smooth mod when the RTH has been initiated. When auto return to home is initiated, if it is a headwind flying back to home point, the aircraft speed will become only 2 meter per second. This warning is to let us know that the aircraft speed might be insufficient together with the remaining battery that may consume more power due to wind resistance to fly back home point if you engage auto RTH and just wait for it to fly back automatically. But if you are in the Sport S mode and you initiate Auto RTH with the remote control still connected with the aircraft, you will be able to push the forward stick on the remote control and increase the speed of the aircraft to match with the Sport mode speed at about 13 meters per second. So after deducting the wind speed, you still be able to fly back at about 7 meters per second against the head wind. Now let's assume the wind is constantly at 10 meters per second at the altitude of 100 meters. Again with the same headwind flying back to home point and with the auto return to home default speed, the aircraft might not be able to hold its position and possible drift with the wind direction getting further away from you and that's what we call a fly away. Unless you are in a sport mode before initiating auto RTH, again with the remote control stick on full forward, you probably be getting about 3 meters per second. 
it is always advisable to take off and start flying against headwind. So when it's returning to home, it will be a tailwind. It will be much safer and easier to get the aircraft back as the aircraft speed will not be affected and slow down when returning to home. Just have to be careful and not to fly past home point on the tailwind, otherwise it will then become a headwind problem. However, in the case that you have to face the headwind situation returning to home point, here is some basic idea and just hope that the wind speed is not stronger than 13 meter per second. Ultimately, it all depends on the situation and location that you're flying, so make your own judgement accordingly. Switch to Sport Mode as Sport Mode has a maximum speed of 13 meter per second and if possible, lower the altitude as much as possible and according to the surrounding while flying back to reduce the wind speed as lower altitude tend to have weaker wind compared to higher altitude. If you still prefer to use the auto RTH function, make sure you adjust the RTH altitude height accordingly or lower than your current height that you know it is a clear path with no obstacle during the auto return to home. By doing this, you will avoid the aircraft to ascend to the higher RTH RTH altitude right after you initiate auto RTH as again higher altitude will have stronger wind and you will want to avoid going further up. If flying directly against the headwind is not helping, try flying it zigzagging. Only do this if you are familiar with the location or you know there will not be any obstacle along the way especially if you are on the beach and the aircraft is above the sea. If your battery is blinking red and you think the battery is insufficient to fly back home point, quickly dial your gimbal downward and look for a safe flat surface spot or open field with no one around. Once you have found a spot, dial the gimbal to 90 degrees downward to get a better position for landing. If there's no obstacle along the straight connection transmitting line between the aircraft and the remote, land it immediately. If there are obstacles along the straight connection transmitting line, lower the altitude slowly, try not to make the remote control lost connection with the aircraft to avoid initiating fail safe RTH and try to manually maintain hover at the spot until the battery is at critical low level that it will initiate forced landing. At least by doing this, the chances of retrieving your aircraft later is much higher and possible with no damage. There is also a descent setting if the connection is lost under the setting safety advanced safety setting but I would not recommend that as when the connection is lost, the aircraft will hover for about 11 seconds before initiating the signal loss option to descend. With wind exceeded 8 meter per second, the aircraft will drift with the wind in that 11 second hovering and we will never know what is going to happen. With the battery critical low and force landing, the hovering is under our control and when force landing kick in, the aircraft might still drift with the wind during landing but at least the uncontrollable duration is shorter than if you lost connection and let the aircraft descend itself. If you forcefully fly back and it hits the critical low battery warning and force land at a random location, the chances of getting back the aircraft still high but the aircraft might end up on a tree, in the river, on top of the roof of someone's house and all other bad terrain. I've seen someone with the latest DJI Fly app start when you tap on the auto RTH icon on your phone, it now prompted two options, land or return to home. I have not personally tested if the land means it will directly descend and land at where the aircraft is located without any buffer or how exactly it works. If there's no buffer on that, then it will be good to replace the force landing method. Just my personal preference, I normally use 100 meter as an altitude benchmark to check and see the wind forecast and only fly if the wind speed is below 8 meter per second. Alternatively, you can download UAV forecast app or any other weather app as a reference to pre-check the wind speed gust and direction before your flight. Thanks for watching and see you again on my next video.